Ladies and gentlemen, this week let us do something fun. Let's try a little bit of a fun image editing tutorial. Well, it's not really editing, it's more of creating an image from scratch. What we're trying to achieve at the end of this tutorial is basically a nice fireball. Of course, it doesn't have to be a fireball. You can, you know, tweak it whatever way you want. You can use it to generate a muzzle flash if you're into action movies. You can use it to generate a mushroom cloud type thing. Whatever suits your fancy. This method is pretty versatile and, well, I think it's a good tool to have in your repertoire of image editing techniques. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna explore how to create a fireball after the break. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So, this tutorial is actually geared towards the software GIMP. Having said that, you can probably actually adapt these steps to any other image editing program and it will probably work in a very similar manner. So let's get right into it. This technique is actually a very simple one. So you simply draw out the rough shape of your fireball with a brush that sort of has the fiery colors and then you use the warp tool to actually just finalize the look and basically stylize it to the point you like it. So here are the steps in detail. Create a new image and size it to whatever dimensions you want to work with. Create a base layer, or if you already have a base layer, then simply fill it to be black. Then create a new layer on top of that. Go to your gradient tool and make sure you have a radial gradient selected. Scroll through your presets to look for a gradient that looks the most like fire. In GIMP, I find that the incandescence gradient preset is actually pretty good for this purpose. Then go ahead and draw out a large circle with the gradient that you've selected. Do make sure that, you know, the fire is brightest on the inside and gets darker as it goes out. So, you know, not like this, you want it the other way around. It needs to start with the intense white color at the center and slowly fall out. Now, pick a circular selection tool and basically try to select the gradient as precisely as possible. Then simply press Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy this image. You can now delete this layer and switch over to the brush tool. Switch your brush blending mode to add. You can optionally also turn down the opacity of the brush if you need to. Then for your brush selection, select clipboard. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to paint with the nice little gradient we've just created. Go ahead and set the size of the brush to a size that you're comfortable with. Once you're done with that, you can begin drawing your flame. Now, remember you should be drawing on the black base layer. You should not be drawing on a layer that is transparent. Go ahead and roughly shape your flame. This is the part that's creative. It is of course up to you to tweak the opacity of the brush. It is up to you to tweak its size. In fact, if you're not satisfied with how it's turning out, you might even want to go back to an earlier step and recreate your brush. At any rate, what we're aiming for here is a rough shape. We will of course try to stylize this further in the next step. So what I have here is basically the rough shape mostly intact, but I want to make it look a little bit more like fire. What you can do now is to actually go to the eye warp filter. This filter gives you many options to actually interact and distort an image. Of course, the few that we'll be using the most will be move, as well as swirl clockwise and swirl counterclockwise. This is another one of the more creative steps, so go ahead and let your creative juices flow. However, there are several tips that you might want to think about. If you're very new to this tool, you might want to turn down the deform amount. This will basically make it easier to control. If you turn it up very much, then just a little click may make things go very crazy. The same goes for the deform radius. Basically, choose a radius that is not too wide so that you don't affect too much. Here's another important tip. You cannot actually undo any steps in this dialog box. So, well, what you can do is you can, you know, continuously click OK so that it's actually saved into the undo history of GIMP. You can sort of undo your changes by selecting the erase tool and going over some of the distortions you've made. So that is one way to recover as well. But this basically erases all the distortions you've made. So it may not be what you want. And this is the result. You can see that by just using a brush and then using the distortion to actually, you know, give it a little bit more life, 
you can actually create a pretty convincing muzzle flash or fireball of any sort. So now let's say you want to integrate this into another image. There are two ways in which you can do that. First, if you want to just, you know, basically copy this image verbatim, you realize that the black basically gets in the way. However, you can set the blending mode of that layer to screen, and that way, well, the black basically disappears. Alternatively, you can incorporate transparency directly into the original image. To do that, add a layer mask to the image. For the type of mask, you want to choose the grayscale mask. This basically says the darker the intensity of a pixel, the more transparent you make it. So the background, which is all black, goes to fully transparent, whereas the brightest parts stay as opaque. You can of course tweak this effect to your liking by selecting the mask and basically using the levels tool to choose how much transparency you want. And there you have it, that is how you create a simple little fireball or muzzle flash or whatever it is in your image editing program. This is a very fun and simple technique and of course I would greatly encourage you try and explore this further and see what you can create. Of course if you create something interesting, don't forget to share it in the comment section. I would love to see whatever work you create. Anyway, that's all there is for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612 TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.